Okay, so imagine that you have um, a jigsaw puzzle. You've got a bunch of pieces around you and now you want to build this puzzle. So you obviously need to find the right pieces to put the puzzle together to make a picture and to make an understanding of what you're building, right? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be building a jigsaw puzzle. And in this jigsaw puzzle, we are actually going to make sense of what that puzzle is. We're going to build it and see whether if it's a picture of a house, a picture of a bird, a picture of whatever a jigsaw puzzle has, I'm pretty sure it will have something appropriate because obviously jigsaw puzzles are, are built by kids. So we're going to build a jigsaw puzzle. We're going to see what we can build. And what I mean by that in terms of trading, we are going to use some of the things that I spoke about in the blueprint video. And if you not watched the blueprint video, just go check it out over here because there are some things that I mentioned which I've not really explained what it is and what they are. Um, so we're going to be taking some of the stuff from that video and I'm going to be explaining it because I did mention stuff like supply and demand zones. I did mention things like reaccumulation or redistribution models. I did mention a lot about models and higher time frame models and SSC. So structure, supply and confirmation. I did mention that uh, quite a lot in that video. So I'm going to be tackling um that about that in this video but we're going to build a puzzle so imagine you have a box in front of you and you've got pieces just sitting around in fact i probably don't even have to describe what a jigsaw puzzle is you guys have probably done it when you were young heck it's not even a problem if you do it to this day but i'm not really sure i've not seen jigsaw puzzles in a while but it's something that i used to do when i was young so we're going to be building it this video and what i'm going to do before I even get to the puzzle, I need to explain the pieces of the puzzle. So the pieces of the puzzle in this situation is going to be the supply and demand zones. It's going to be the reaccumulation or the redistribution models. It's going to be using the meta effect sentiment and the indicator, which I've explained in this video. So if you're confused, please just go watch this video. Like this is a blueprint um, showing you like for, for a beginner trader, what, how you could get context, how you can get involved in your market without actually thinking in patterns because that is the one thing that I should tell you before we build this puzzle. You need to understand that markets move in models. They don't move in patterns like head and shoulder patterns, um, the, the the trend line break. Um, it's, it's, it's fun and all because that's what will happen when you get into trading. You will see that content for the first time. But what happens over time is that it will get you into a position where you start taking every single trade at every single time frame and every single zone will become a zone to you and every single trend line or every single time when a market is in a trending um, position or in a trending environment, sorry, you will look to draw a trend line. So what happens is that you will find any single thing and you'll find every single place on a market where you would look to get involved. And that is true. Any single zone will become a zone over time. And that's basically how markets move. It's 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 basically the law of averages. I'm not sure if the law of averages says that, but it's eventually price will go back to the mean. So it will it will move away from a certain area and eventually it'll go back to a certain area over time. So that is true throughout any single time frame, throughout any single market. And if you're looking to get involved on any single time frame, on every single move, what will happen over time is that you'll have randomized results. So what will happen is that your minus one will be a minus 10 the next time, and then it will be a minus five, and then it will be a plus 12, and then a, a plus five. It's very random, and that is not healthy, and that is not really good to a long-term sustainability of trading. You, you, you need to develop a system that doesn't, focus on randomized results and that's what you will learn through the space on like instagram um through everyone that's showing you a lifestyle that's showing you patterns because if it was that easy then everyone would be trading and everyone would be making millions but there's a reason why 78 percent of people lose money in markets it's because they think in patterns they think in in, in things that are, are are fixed and and structured to a point where this is what you're looking for this is what you should do execute that which yes it's true over time that does happen but what happens is that you will end up being in a situation where you won't understand why price 
is doing what it's doing instead it will actually play into emotions more than it's actually playing into your understanding about what is happening with price and i've mentioned that so many times especially in the last few videos but anyway so let me just mention some of the, the the jigsaw puzzle so a supply and demand zone right so the first i, I was, I was going to mention a supply and demand zone reaccumulation or redistribution model um get into the ment fx indicator and the sentiment so i'm just going to explain what those things are from the blueprint video so basically let's just look at as demand zone first so essentially just imagine this is the last downward candle so just imagine this is a candle i know this is an ugly sketch but just imagine this is a bearish candle and this is a bullish candle and that's exactly what you want to look for and obviously they would have some wicks but essentially what it is is that the supply zone is the last downward move before the up move so this whole area over here is a demand zone and what makes it a valid demand zone is that the next candle which is this bullish candle over here and this one's a bearish one this bullish candle needs to close above the bearish candle the whole body not just the wick you'll find that this candle might be bullish right but what will happen is that it will close below let's just say for example this is a bullish candle it'll close below but then it would wick above so this one i would not constitute as a valid um supply or demand zone sorry let me just draw it again for you guys so this is exactly what it is so you want to be looking for something like this so the last downward move before the up, upward move and that whole area is the demand zone and the bottom of this zone over here is your validation point so if price had to move back into this area and go below this point then this whole demand zone is invalid and vice versa for supply it's the same thing it's the last imagine if this is a bullish candle and now this is a bearish candle so this is the last upward move before the down downward movement so this whole area will be a supply zone and the same thing again this is the validation point and if price had to go towards this validation point this whole supply zone would be invalid so that is what a supply and demand zone is in terms of the don's loves fx uh, mentality and how i view supply and uh, and demand zones there are many types of supply and demand zones um heck you could even say that it doesn't even have to be a zone it could literally be price just moving rapidly away from an area that could probably tell you that okay demand got involved within that area but to see footprints you know because that's how i actually view it i i, I draw it like that because i want to see money getting involved i want to see whoever is operating the sparkets getting involved and if i see something like that what i've just drawn over there then i know okay that is where footprints are getting involved so that's one piece of the of the puzzle so let's go find the other piece so the reaccumulation model so let's 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 talk about the reaccumulation the redistribution model so as you saw if you watched that video you saw i draw some i drew something like this sorry where you have the ment fx indicator increasing and then there's a breakdown and then there's increasing stairs again in fact i didn't really draw this part i only drew this part but basically this is a reaccumulation model um if you go on to trading view and if you just type in in the indicators over here and you type in ment fx structure structure indicator you just find this indicator over here and then something like this will pop up on the charts these blue lines over here so you can see that these staircases indicate increasing lows which means that the price is bullish in that scenario so the reaccumulation model is just literally coming from um, the Dow theory where markets go through accumulation they go through a markup phase they go through a distribution phase and they go through a markdown phase there is a accumulation a reaccumulation a distribution a redistribution and there's a mark up and a markdown so what would happen is that price would obviously be increasing 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 and then there's an interruption and what happens in this area over here is that people would think that it's time to sell and i've spoken about it in that video where a big cloud of liquidity would be engineered and that's actually how true liquidity is engineered in the market and ultimately what would happen is that price would just continue in that direction and that's how trends sustain themselves so this 
line over here is obviously the 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 the, the, re, the mint fx structure indicator this is what would happen and this is what it, the indicator would look like to you and this is what the reaccumulation model would look like um when price breaks down and the most powerful thing about this is that you would want to see these lows so you want to see the indicator be protected so it only broke down to about year in this example that i've of sketched over here but i'm going to show you now on this pair because the, the 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 japanese pairs have been very bullish over the last few months so i'm going to show you an example of what i mean right now but if these protected lows are holding and it continues to now build or if price continues to go long then you just assume that this is a reaccumulation model and even before this happens you will assume that that is a reaccumulation model so that's what a reaccumulation model is uh, vice versa for a redistribution model that's that's what you should be looking for um i could actually draw the redistribution model as well it's increasing protected highs and there's an interruption and then there's more increasing protected highs so what you would assume what that happened here is a redistribution provided that price did not go even further up and it's important to assume things because ultimately price can continue going up and it would never be in a distribution phase where it could it would continue going in that trend that it's established but often um, often what happens is that the trend would continue because people would often look to do the opposite of what it, the trend is doing and that's why trends sustain, sustain, um, sustain themselves because that engineering of liquidity is what is, is created by people um, thinking that it's time to go short this is exactly why i use the sentiment viewer and this is exactly why i use you know even the community one because that's where i get to see okay what people are thinking versus what what what, what the institutional order flow is and it's it's very interesting to see that often this is very different to this one and that's when you actually get to see okay how markets actually move because anyway just go watch uh, the video about liquidity and and the blueprint i explained the whole cloud of liquidity over there so that's a redistribution model you want to look for price going down and there's an interruption this is where you assume redistribution um, and it would continue or it would actually go up and then continue down or it could consolidate and go down but this is where you assume you don't really look to get involved and obviously it depends on what time frame you're looking at this models so there's models happening within models that are happening within models so what i mean by that is that time frames actually don't exist time frames are actually a lie what actually exists is structural contextual models within those time frames and you use those time frames to validate those models so you would go through a daily uh, a day a daily chart a four hour and a one hour a 30 minutes or one minute 30 second you go through each every single time frame to just see whether if each model or each thing that you're trying to find is linking or is 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 both in tandem with each other and obviously if they're not then that's a market that you shouldn't be touching so that's one thing i'd often say that's a that's a redistribution model um the second thing is the mint fx sentiment viewer so obviously you can just go onto this website called mintfx.com um, it will probably take you to this page in fact it won't take you here let's actually click the home page so it'll take you to a page like this and then you just go click more and then you go click sentiment viewer it'll probably take you to sentiment viewer and then you can look at a couple of pairs and you can see what the institutional sentiment is for the day and for the for the longer term period so i was looking at the canadian dollar and the japanese yen so let's go look at the japanese yen pairs so you can see all the japanese yen pairs um, they're quite bullish all of them very 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 bullish look at the the one that we were looking at right now so this one is 91 percent bullish on on the on the intraday so on friday it was bullish and long term it's in a bullish mode you can see 89 percent. it's all green 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 and this is actually the same pair that I'm looking at. You can you can sort of see that over the last since what since March, twenty twenty three all the way it's it's literally just increased in the price. So you can see the bullishness is there just by looking at this, 
And if you look at the Forex um, sentiment, uh, my FX book, normally what happens is that it it's generally the opposite of what you see over here. However, I did look at this week and it is, it's the same, about 73% long. So they, they're also going long over here. But you'll find so many times that when this is extremely bullish, this is extremely bearish. And that is where you can see that cloud of liquidity that I'm talking about. It's because everyone is looking to go short in areas that you're not supposed to be going short in. In fact, if I can remember, probably around this point, around yeah, in fact, because that's actually where I started looking at the Japanese pairs. Probably around, let's just play it on, probably around this area over here when the price broke down in August. This is where people actually started, let me just pause it. This is where people actually started to look for selling. And I actually remember that the FX book sentiment all on the, the, the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen was extremely bearish. And this was extremely bullish. And you could see that from that time, in fact, let's just close it. But from that time, it literally just continued and it didn't go down. And every single person probably got liquidated. It probably lost money over here during this time around August, September, because the price just continued. So it's in a mode where bullishness has been established the, the 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 trend is set and now it's delivering but now since august and september october it's now breaking down it's it's going into a more uh, consolidation phase so that markup phase is not in play the markup phase was probably between march and june as you can see this long push up so i've explained some of the jigsaw puzzles let's 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 put the puzzle together right so let's just put the mint fx indicator on and let's just take what i am what I've, I've mentioned about the pieces and let's let's put them together so if you actually look at this indicator right now right you could clearly see it's increasing 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 protected lows and then there was a breakdown over here i don't know if you guys can see that like this is exactly where you assume reaccumulation this is where you assume that the market is re in a reaccumulation phase to take prices even higher. And what you want to see is these staircases being protected. So notice how price never came down to these areas. So this is probably a valid reaccumulation model. This is a pure, this is exactly what I mean by reaccumulation model, just by using this indicator. And what happens, right, is that a lot of people will be looking to go shorts like i've mentioned there so that is the reaccumulation model that I've, 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 I've spoken about but in order to even get there and this is exactly what i talk about in the blueprint video you need to establish a context first before you even decide whether it, it's in a reaccumulation model or redistribution model or if you should be looking for those models so i'm not going to explain it because you should go watch the video over there but one thing i will say is structure on its own because this is what this indicator is doing. It's the Mint FX structure indicator. So you can see the structure of this market is that it is increasing, 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 increasing on the daily time frame, right? And there was a reaccumulation, or I assumed there was a reaccumulation model that took place over here. But structure on its own means nothing if you do not have context and if you don't do multi time frame analysis. So the structure is this indicator that we're using. The context is me using this MetaFX sentiment and this sentiment view on my FX book in, um, website. That's the context. And that is where you could go and watch this video and actually see what I mean, how to establish that context about looking at this indicator and establishing that, okay, since the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen is 91% bullish on the intraday and it's 89% bullish, we can definitely say that this pair wants to go long. We can definitely say that this, this market wants to go long. It's bullish. It's extremely bullish. So now we have the context. Now we have the structure. And then now we have to do the multi time frame analysis to verify on other time frames whether if this same model is there or not. And if it is, then we can look to get involved 
if the execution criteria is presented and this is exactly where i spoke about this in this video right there the execution criteria i know i'm just going back to old videos that i made but i've, I've spoken about this so many times already so anyway so let's let's look for supply uh, let's look for demand zones because we've already established that this is extremely bullish so we want to look for demand zones so basically what i mean by this is that in fact let's just take away the indicator because i want to actually strictly talk about the supply on the demand zone so let's let's actually look at the the supply and demand zone situation so let's draw this is a, a, a supply a demand zone right here this is where money got involved you can see this is the last candle before this up move here and notice how price moves away from this area and it doesn't come back to this demand zone or it doesn't mitigate this demand zone so this demand zone has not been touched and same thing over here there's another demand zone over here this last downward move before this big up move over here so there's your demand zone over there this 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 big candle over here after this downward candle over here and there's actually another supply or there's actually another demand zone right here this last downward move before the upward movement there's actually a supply zone in fact this is not really a valid one but you can see that this candle is actually if i actually change the color of this one this is a supply zone and what happens is that this supply zone got invalidated because price just continued and what happens now is that these demand zones are still holding so that's why you can see the indicator is having increasing protected lows and notice how i took the jigsaw so i took the piece of the puzzle and i'm putting the, the pieces together so i've taken the supply and demand zones so i've actually found that there are demand zones that are holding and there's a supply zone that did not hold and notice how i took the sentiment um, structure or the structure indicator sorry and i put it on right now notice how i've identified on the mentfx website that this thing is bullish notice how i've identified a reaccumulation model which a reaccumulation model is a sign of bullishness and a redistribution model is a sign of bearishness notice how i'm taking these things together and i'm putting them together so now what happens right is that we need to then prove that this model and everything that i've done on the daily time frame because this is a daily time frame in fact we can delete this one because we've already said that this supply zone is invalid there's probably more demand zones in fact there's a demand zone right here that's where there's a valid demand zone right here and, and there's a demand zone right here but this demand zone got broken down so that is where you assume a reaccumulation model this demand zone didn't get you know it's not valid it, it got invalidated but these demand zones in fact let's actually go further no they're still valid these demand zones are still valid so if these demand zones are holding that means that this whole we've, we're literally putting I, I don't know if you can see this guys like i am literally taking each and every single puzzle and let's just go out I'm literally taking every single puzzle and I'm putting it together. I'm taking this whole idea of supply and demand zones. I'm using the structure indicator. I've went on the website and I've established a context. I've established a reaccumulation model by looking at this indicator. So everything is aligning with a bullish sentiment. So everything is aligning with this 91 percent right here so what we have to do now is go and do our multi time frame analysis and see if we can find the exact same thing on a lower time frame so let's just go to the one hour that's even lower than the daily but you can actually see there is a market that actually went bearish it broke down it broke down and now what is happening is that price is starting to make a recovery up but again this is where we assume reaccumulation because on a daily 
it's in a reaccumulation model. So I might have to go up to the four hour for this one just to see it properly. And again, you can see the same breakdown over here that you could assume that this is actually showing a huge range. So there's actually no context on the four hour. However, it's actually broken even lower. So on the four hour, it's actually showing that it has gone through a redistribution phase, which is now being in a reaccumulation phase. So there's a model within a model. So on the daily, there's a redistribution model, but on the four hour, it looks like a whole consolidation area or redistribution phase or a distribution phase, sorry, because it's actually, it wasn't bearish. But then on the one hour, you can see that the same reaccumulation model is happening. And if you go on the 15 minutes, you could see that over here, there's a reaccumulation that's taking place. And now the indicator is starting to indicate increasing protected lows. And you could even use the same thing again and look for demand zones. And you can look for supply zones and you can see which ones are valid and which ones are not valid. And if you can see any validation of those zones and the validation is if those zones are being held, then you already know that money is getting involved. So ideally, we want to see demand zones being held. And that lets us know that, OK, finally, money is gotten involved on the 15 minute time frame. And you can even go as low as five minutes. So it's not really clear on a five minutes, but yeah, you can see there's there's multiple times where, okay, you probably would have stayed out of this. This is probably a reaccumulation model and it probably broke down again before increasing, increasing lows. And it, it broke down multiple times on a five minutes, but notice how all these lows over here, or in fact, only one, two is being held. And notice how the price is increasing so that lets you know that okay money has gotten involved but you you want to see something that's clean like this is not really clean this is very choppy but you've you you, you can see what i'm talking about when you you've established a context you're starting to put a puzzle together and when you put that puzzle together you can actually see that okay this is where it wants to go let's do it on a different pair right now so Let's go in the euro and the US dollar. So I actually saw that this, let's go back on the daily. So I actually saw that this pair was actually, let's go on the indicator, on the sentiment view. Let's do the same thing. So euro, US dollar, right? Okay. So where is it now? Euro, US dollar down here. So 76% bearish and it's 74% bearish. So this market is going short. So let's go look for redistribution models supply zones not demand and reaccumulation models because this is a bearish market according to this sentiment viewer and what would it look like on oh, okay so that's perfect so people are going long that is perfect 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 so i can already see a cloud of liquidity being engineered because everyone is buying this asset but there's in the institutional sentiment is that it's going short. So that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. I love it when these two contradict each other because that's often when this works, you know. So let's let's look for the same thing. So as you can see, over the last few from from July all the way until in fact when was this? July twenty twenty three, all the way until November, it's been in a downward trend. So you can see the structure is in a bearish structure, right? But that means nothing. How do we actually tell if the structure is valid or not? Again, you can look for higher time frame supply and demand zones and see whether if those supply and demand zones are valid. You could use the MetaFX indicator to see whether if you can find a redistribution model in this context. And you can use multi time frame analysis. Same thing, same thing all over and all over again. So again, let's let's do this, right? So as you can see. I can see there's a supply zone over here. And as you can see, it got invalidated because there was a last upward move before this downward move. There's a supply zone right here. And all of these got invalidated, by the way, but that is 
the most powerful thing about assuming reaccumulation because now since those these zones have been invalidated that's when you actually walk away from the market and you wait for the bearishness because we've already established that this pair is bearish you wait for the bearishness to enter the market and on that canadian dollar and the japanese yen pair you wait for the bullishness to establish itself so that is probably the most important thing is the patience part so if is there any other zones that i could see you could definitely constitute this as a supply zone because it moved away from that area but i want to see clear cut ones where zones are being held and if zones are not being held then I, I i ultimately stay away from that market or i wait for new supply to enter the market if in a bearish context or i wait for new demand to enter if in a bullish context so here is a perfect in fact i should have identified this one this is a perfect supply zone so ideally what i would want to see is price move away from this area or come back to this area and move away in fact yeah that's two things that's that's what i want price to do i want price to move away from this area or to come back and move away from this area not to come and invalidate this point because it's a supply zone this one now and that lets you know that money is getting evolved so once we've established that we can go turn on the structure indicator and you can see that they are increasing and there's multiple times where it broke down but then there's increasing protected highs and then it broke down and we assume that this whole thing over here is a redistribution phase and what happened over here money got involved over here through the supply zone and what we're going to wait to see is price to move away from that zone or to come back and move away that lets you know that okay the bearishness is in it's involved the money is involved in that market going short and again you go down on lower time frames and you find the exact same thing. In fact, the four perfect, absolutely perfect. This is look at this like increasing protected highs. And look, there's a small breakdown over there, assume redistribution, and it just continues. In fact, there's multiple supply zones over here. These are four hour ones. So, this big red one is the daily one. There's a supply zone right there. There's a supply zone right there. Money got involved just right there. Money definitely got involved. In fact, it's too small. But money got involved over there. And one thing you want to see is these zones being held. In fact, this is also supply zone right here. You want to see these zones being held. And if these zones are being held and price is not coming to these zones, then this scenario of a bearish market is valid and notice again we are putting the pieces of the jigsaw together notice how i'm painting a pattern and you can literally do this on any single market and you can find context and you can actually look to get involved so the higher time frame that you're doing all your work on and it, it, that higher time frame has to be your 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 your, your time frame of entry has to be 30 times lower than the time frame that you're doing the work on. So that's basically what you need to you need to keep that higher time frame in relation to the time frame that you're entering. So if you're entering on a four hour, you have to go 30 times lower than the four hour. So if you're entering on the daily, you have to go 30 times lower than the daily. If you're entering on if you if you if you are entering or if you're doing your analysis, sorry. On a four hour, you go 30 times lower than the four hour. If you're doing your analysis on a daily, you go 30 times. You, you, you get the point. So you do your analysis on a bigger time frame. And then your, your, your time frame of entry is going to be 30 times lower than the time frame that you did your analysis on. So that's, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. So if you want to go lower again and see the same thing. Great. So on the one hour now. Perfect. And, and, oh my God, guys. I, I hope you guys can see this. This is amazing. Look at how every single thing that I'm doing is aligning. It's 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 the price is 
it's in, in, in the, on, the, on the one hour chart, it's within that daily supply zone. And here are all these four hour zones. And we can even find one hour supply zones. And look at the indicator. Look at how it, it, the, 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 the one hour time frame is validating the four hour um, time frame increasing protected highs or it's validating the meta effect structure indicator and it's validating the daily one so look at how i went on different time frames but we're seeing the exact same thing on different time frames so that lets you know that okay we if the more time frames you can find this on the more that this sentiment of selling is valid so that's basically how you you build your puzzle and if you put these pieces together then you can get the picture of what is going on on the euro on the euro and the US dollar, which is a, a bearish market. And you could do the exact same thing on a, on the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen, which is a strongly bullish market. Where Where is it now? You could do the same thing. Like that's exactly what you could do. You could, you, you could take pieces together and put them together. And ultimately you've got context, you've got a trading plan and the execution is what I've explained over there, which is, this is what I do, and you've got you, you can learn any other execution plan. It's it's up to you, but that's ultimately what you look to do. That's ultimately what you 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 do when you're building a puzzle, and ultimately what you do when you're using these things together. You you take these things together and you put them together, and then you build a story. So yeah, if you got to this part, congratulations. Um, hopefully this all made sense but that's is exactly how you can look to get involved there's there's numerous amount of ways to get involved in the market but that's one of the ways to get involved um and i hope you enjoyed this if you got this far so yeah